Howdy, I'm Scott Lacey from Bozeman. I'm an athlete with the Crosscut Mountain Sports Center's Elite Biathlon team, and I wanted to take a break today from routine summer training to go over some of my favorite knee stability exercises. Knee stability is vitally important as skiers as we spend a lot of time gliding on one leg and we want that one leg to be rock solid, but it's also important in everything we do, whether it's running, biking, weightlifting, or just injury prevention and power delivery. I've chosen four of my favorite exercises to go over and I hope to show them in a way you can do these at home, in your front yard, or in a park and not need the specialized equipment of a lifting gym or a weight facility. As we go over them, I'll show, I'll show elements to focus on throughout each exercise and ways to add complexity as you progress and strengthen while doing these exercises over time. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. First things first is always mobility. Mobility comes in a huge array of exercises, but when focusing just on the knees, I like to focus on hips, knees, and ankles, or in the vice versa order, starting with ankles, doing exercises of just general flexion and extension. You can then start to do circles, rotating from the outside and inside of each foot, to your toes, to the opposite outside inside, to your heels, and back and forth. Switch directions, slowly doing this without over flexion, and then pay attention to areas of tightness, areas of over mobility or restricted mobility. This allows you to recognize asymmetry or hypermobility, things to stay aware of throughout the exercise. Then move on to your knees. Start doing circles with your knees. You can switch directions. Obviously every motion includes hips and ankles, but find areas that are possibly tight or injury prone or painful. These are areas you can work on, note for later, or monitor progress over time. Then eventually do your hips. Same thing with circles. You can do large circles either direction, or you can choose a wide stance and focus on just movement within your hip sockets. This is something that's often overlooked. Your hip sockets are highly mobile when injury free, but oftentimes can be very tight through exercises we do within skiing. Skate skiing is a lot of open hip motion and having hip mobility is one of the most critical elements to the lower body. Once mobile, now that we've warmed up, we've gotten nice and mobile, we'll begin with some of the most basic. This is the fundamental athletic position on one leg, getting nice and low, ankle flexed, knee is not forward of the toe, but it's still bent, and your hips are starting to get low and close to the ground. We've really loaded this leg. You can then do forward, out, and back. All this does is continue warming up, building strength in this knee. Monitor your knee. Are you starting to go side to side? Are you flexing forward? Are you beginning to straighten? And lift your entire body. This exercise is great for just building awareness and mobility in the opposite hip, the hip that's moving. Make sure to do both legs. One of my favorite things to do is doing this at home with a washcloth on tile. Progressing this exercise further, getting into the athletic position again, making sure your hips are square. You can take a pole a ski pole, a ruler, a yardstick, whatever. Put it place on your hips. Make sure you're not opening, lifting, tilting, and start adding the resistance to this. Making sure again that that knee is square over the foot. Maintaining this loaded leg. Another variation of this is getting low, extending forward, and drawing a circle. Again, making sure your hips are square. Not opening, not compressing, not standing up straight. Maintaining a nice loaded leg, monitoring this knee's ability to stay in line and track. You can do different level bands. You can see if you're symmetrical to each side of your body. I generally do about 10 per side, maybe two sets on a grid day. Another excellent way to add stability and moving into the next exercise is using a balance pad. 
These are great, yes, sometimes required to be in a gym if you don't own one at home. You can also just choose a small platform that adds an element of balance under your foot. But doing the same exact exercise on the pad. Again, forward, sideways, and back. I really choose to focus on having square hips, maintaining that loaded leg. And then of course, adding an element of strengthen. As you can see, this takes a lot of focus for me. Making sure your knee is not just wandering all over and you can monitor that progress over time. The next exercise is just learning to land on one leg with a perfectly loaded leg with a nice square stable knee. I choose classic most of the time, but you can do this skate and just landing on that leg. You can look down, or you can use a mirror in front of you, making sure your knee is not moving side to side. I like to make sure that I'm not over flexing, going in front of my knee, my hips are low, I have this athletic position. Again, this is just the classic motion. Or you can do the same with skate. And monitoring movement of that knee. A great way to add complexity is again with a balance pad or landing onto a smaller platform that adds an element of balance. Switching legs here. As you can see, I need to continue doing this. And again, as a skate motion. The third exercise I, I enjoy is just learning to balance on one foot for a long period of time and then adding a stimulus. This can be either on a small platform, on a BOSU, or on a balance pad. Getting into position and then as a athlete, spending a lot of time skating, staying in that skate position with your leg out. If you're classic, you can have your leg back as a skater staying in this position. Then you can start having someone throw you a tennis ball, catching, you can do this against a wall, throwing a tennis ball, making yourself get into different positions, challenging your movement and balance, or simply adding a weight, switching sides now, staying in that nice position, not having my knee too far forward of my foot, nice loaded leg, and then adding a motion that requires you to constantly adjust your balance and your knee and your hip. Then all of a sudden you'll be gliding on snow with nothing but ski poles in your hands and the world is yours. This is known as a soonbi as well to those of you more experienced in the Nordic world. This is an exercise I found the most helpful for skate skiing, keeping that knee nice and square while you're gliding. This is just called a step up, and then we'll add a little bit of resistance either side of the knee. Choose a small little platform. This can be your little basic box in the gym, or it can be a stair, or it can be a side of a bench. I've chosen a little tiny Costco stool here, something I have in my pantry. You load this knee nice and well and straight, and you're again keeping those hips nice and square and you're just stepping up. You're watching that knee stay perfectly tracked right over the foot. You're not getting that too far forward. You're not having it come back here, using lots of glute, coming up, switching legs. And then as you progress, using just generic elastic band, have that knee pulled to the outside. So that band's pulling it now. So now I really have to focus on keeping it nice and tracked. And then you can turn around, do the other leg, pulling to the outside. But also, have it pulled to the inside. So now you're strengthening the outside of your hip and knee, and you're watching it track
and vice versa. Thanks so much for watching these videos. I hope you've enjoyed them. Knee stability is something I find that adds to my life in a lot of ways beyond Nordic skiing. It's something I like to revisit all year round, no matter where I am, and especially on the road. And I hope I've shown some great ways to show ways to improvise this while on the road and you don't have the facilities that you might need at home all summer. Simple things that can fit in your suitcase, small little bands, little elastics, heavily, hugely versatile. Ski pole, like I was talking about, shows that motion if you're opening up or rocking side to side. Simple objects, water bottles that can be used as weights or rocks that can be used as a balance object under your foot. A little tennis ball can be a great massage tool and a balance object to have thrown at you to challenge you. Thanks so much for watching. Happy summer from Bozeman. See you on the trails.